Well, legacy point one. What is baptism from a Lutheran perspective? Roger, talk to us. Baptism is God's holy handshake. Now, that's a word picture. That's not really a definition. A definition would be that baptism is a sacrament. Lutherans define sacrament as a sacred act that's commanded by Christ in which a visible element is connected to God's word. A visible element would be water in baptism, bread and wine in the Lord's Supper, and it's connected with God's word that is a promise. And that will deliver to someone the blessings of the cross. Life in Christ, forgiveness, salvation. So, Martin Luther describes it this way. Baptism is not merely water only, but water included in God's command and water connected with God's word. It brings a promise that gives a relationship to people like a handshake. Now that's why I call it a holy handshake as a word picture. It would be like this. It would be like God extending a handshake out, and we know that in our culture as if I am making an agreement with someone, I'll shake on it. And God is saying, I want to do more than make an agreement with you. I want to make a relationship with you. And I want to give you all the blessings of the cross, what my son has done for you. And here is that relationship. Would you shake my hand there, Mike? And what happens is that gift is then given to you. All the blessings of the cross passed over. So it's God's holy handshake in which he delivers to us a relationship with him through Christ, all the blessings of the cross. Roger, you said that uh, baptism is water connected with God's word. What are the scriptures that we look at that help us understand how we should practice baptism and, and what we should know about it? Well, the first scripture would be the Great Commission that Jesus gives us in Matthew 18, 19, and 20. He says this, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. And by the way, all nations includes even children, I believe. Um, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And that is where we get our formula for baptizing. We will baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. There's something important here. His command to us is to make disciples. And he gives us baptism as one of the ways that that comes about. But baptism is always given with teaching. It's like two different sides of the same coin. The coin is to make disciples, and that involves baptizing and teaching. Uh, for children, uh, we baptize first and we teach as they grow. For adults, we will teach first, and then we'll baptize. Uh, both are necessary. And uh, what I believe, and that uh, what makes baptism so significant to me, is that in my baptism, I have an identity of who I am in Christ. God has made an agreement with me a handshake, a relationship. He's given me a whole new identity. I'm a new creation in Christ. And as I learn about that, and I am taught to obey all that he has given me, so I have who I am and then what I do. Um, you mentioned scripture that helps us explain it. I also like Galatians chapter 3. And the image there is adoption. Galatians 3.26 
You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. I love that imagery of us being adopted into God's family uh, so that I'm not just uh, a creation of God. I'm his son. and you, uh, We're his sons and daughters. But isn't it faith that makes us part of God's family? Absolutely. Um, but it's faith that receives the gift of that relationship that God gives us in Jesus Christ. And baptism is received with faith. Faith, by the way, is more than just an intellectual knowledge. Uh, it is more than just the facts. Even uh, the devil knows the facts about God having sent his son to the world to rescue mankind, but yet does not have a relationship with him. The devil doesn't have faith. Faith is trust in that. Faith is that part of the relationship that receives the hand that God offers. And um, baptism is what lets us grab that hand and hold that faith. It says it another way in, in Romans chapter 6, in verses 3 and 4. Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? In other words, we're connected to what Jesus Christ has done for us. And we're given that gift of receiving it, which is faith. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may have a new life. Baptism connects us to Jesus personally. And that relationship is a faith relationship. In it, we receive all the gifts of what Jesus has done for us. So, Roger, are you saying then that, that baptism saves you? Well, remember that we're saved through what Jesus Christ has done for us through his life, death, and resurrection in our behalf. Baptism is a means of that grace. It's how God places that into our hands. And as he does, it is faith then that receives it. 1 Peter 3 says it this way. In verse 21, this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you. Now, that is not the removal of dirt from the body. It's, it's not just a ceremony. Um, but the pledge of a good conscience towards God. It saves you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The power is in what Jesus Christ has done for you. And it's baptism whereby he extends that grace so that it can be your own. There's a lot of meaning, and it's very powerful stuff packed into this simple act of baptism. Uh, and it touches our lives in very profound ways. So talk in your small groups now for just a little bit. Um, when you see a baptism at church, what touches your heart the most? Talk about it for a few minutes. We'll, we'll come back and we'll see you here in a, in a couple minutes.